what drew you to Quentin himself? Oh, I was I was drawn to him because of failure. Um, Quentin had a great phrase. He said, uh, "If at first you don't succeed, failure may be your style." And in my mid thirties, about ten years ago, I had a real low point where nothing was working and everything was going wrong, personally yeah. and professionally. Um, and the, the the year in question, which was twenty twelve. Just as it couldn't get any worse, a close friend of mine took his own life. And I just reached a very, very low point, an extremely low point. And on, on one of those very low days, I um, happened to see um, a little um, insert of Quentin Crisp on YouTube. You know how YouTube suggests videos for you. Mm. I watched it um, and it was it was a recording of him doing his one man show in Los Angeles in the early 80s. And I started smiling. And, I, you know, I, I vaguely knew who he was from childhood, but yeah, all I really knew was he was that this guy with a strange voice and funny hair. And I thought, you know, I really ought to find out who he actually was and what, what the big stir was. And I found that he, he, he made me laugh and he started to make me feel hopeful about life again. I think a lot of us live very overdriven lives we're always internally comparing ourselves to other people or to expectations that we've put on ourselves or that we think other people have of us um you know what quentin called trying to keep up with the joneses mm -hmm. and um i think it can it can be very very damaging because even if it doesn't make you uh stop you from functioning it can make you very very despairing on the inside hidden away from what people can see mm -hmm. and I really wanted to uh, sort my life out. And he he became a little bit of a guru for me in doing that. I never met him, obviously. I mean, I was I was still like 22 when he died. He died in 1999. But the, he left enough behind in his writings and his the videos that were made of him for, for people like me to come along and pick up some hope and some inspiration. I mean, that's why the word hope is in the title of, of the play. It's Quentin Crisp, Naked Hope. Yeah. And I think that um, we're all in need of that, that, that pick me up from time to time. And it's why I wanted to share it with people. Mm -hmm. If you think about Quentin, he had every reason in the first seven decades of his life to, to feel down and despairing. He said he lived, as he put it, on the outer suburbs of ostracism. Yeah. And yet he hung in there because he knew that it's and anything can change, even if it takes a great deal longer than you think. And very often we can be sitting with a situation in our lives. There can be lots of good things that are going on. OK, but there are some other things or a particular thing that's dragging us down and we can't see a way forward with it. We cannot imagine that it will end. And yet it's amazing how you do one day turn a corner if you hang in there. And I think a lot of the message that I'm spreading with the piece through Mr. Crisp is 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 the 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 huge importance of of hanging in there because downness and dark times that they have one particularly nasty weapon, which is they convince you that they're going to last forever, and that's I think what leads to despair. And yeah. although the the show is is I hope and believe is is full of laughter and joy, there's also a um, a deeper underlying thing there about really going on that journey into the interior, looking at yourself, taking stock of where you're at and 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 seeing if you can rethink it in a more positive way. And he really helped me to do that. I, I suppose um, in, in, in slightly more modern terms, he was a bit of a therapist for me. What sort of feedback do you get from the audience? Because I'm imagining lots of ages are coming to see it, lots of generations, possibly even people who maybe originally saw Quentin um, live live on stage or whatever. The, the big thing that always strikes me that people say is um, that it's it's uplifted them because very often someone will say something like, um, I'm going through a breakup at the moment or I've just lost my job or my mum is going through dementia. It can be all kinds of things like that. And they, they find something optimistic and uplifting in, in this apparent story 
of dustiness and rejection. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think I think that that's that's the most touching thing for me. The 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 funniest one I remember was I did the show in Litchfield and. I was signing some copies of the script afterwards and a man came up to me to buy one. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah I'm glad, glad you wanted to buy the script. That's wonderful. And and before the conversation could get any further, he was he was burning. He was, I hated it. I hated it. <laughs> and I said, oh, it was so full on. And it, yeah. he was dead, dead serious. Yeah. And I said, oh, well, oh, I'm sorry about that. Um, why was that? And he said, well, the thing is, you were you were standing up there on stage and you were talking for an hour and a quarter about being true to your real self and that anything else is ultimately a, a serious waste of time and, and leads to great unhappiness. And I'm watching this and listening to this and I'm thinking, I haven't done that. I haven't done what he's talking about. I'm in my early 60s. I've always tried to fit in with people I didn't really like. I've done a job I didn't really want to do. Yeah. I haven't been to a lot of the places I want to go. And you're you're telling me it's all wrong. So I hated it. Thank you very much. <laughs> and he went on his way with his script. It was a it was a wonderful way of saying that you, you know that it had it had challenged him. Wonderful. And again, I, I, I think what I, I want to do for audiences is absolutely four square entertain them, but give them something richer and, and nourishing as well as that, that they can hopefully take away and, and think about. And, and you're right, it is applicable to people at any age, because I was in, in my mid 30s when I wrote it. I'm now in my mid 40s, but I still listen to the words as I'm saying them.